I just feel like I'm just going to get distracted and not do anything. I'm just way too productive. <laughs> yeah, it happens. It happens to the best of us. But I went to go buy my Negan today because I started that little, uh, I started the stream really early for the episode and I was going over, um, like, you know, I was setting it up. I'm going to buy this. I'm going to do this. And I go into it and I just realized since we don't have any prosperity, we don't have our weekly store unlocked. So I can't purchase the Negans. Uh... Yeah. So it's <laughs> unfortunate. So and it's the Ruby spend event, which is even worse. So I don't even think I'm going to be able to do the Ruby rush in the next two days, which sucks because uh... I really wanted to like put those together. Um, but development gear and the development um, advanced fragments, unfortunately, don't really give us too many benefits for me to be like, ah, I'm not going to do it because I kind of want to do it. I just want to do it. <laughs> I don't know. This, the skill locks are pretty nice, though, as well. I'm going to be making like a god tier husky here soon. I have so many animals that I've been training up and um, getting to the point where I'm going to just make a super animal. And I want to get that combat speed on it, the plus two combat speed. It's going to change my entire game. And something that resonated with me last night that I'm still thinking about is, is really making my F1 just a superpower so I can just flip whatever I want. I'm just a li I, it does sadden me a little bit to have like the weakest F2s and 3s and 4s, but, and now F5, but all in good time, I'm sure. What's up, Mooney? So you said you want to record the what? Yes, let me see. I, it's in, I have a setup for this already. I have my dual coach screen scene, and I can uh, capture both of our games together as we go through and talk about it. Let me okay, see. I went live with the, with the game. You can see it? Perfect, yes. See it. Yes, I can see it. Can you just give me like two, 30 seconds here? Let, let me um, screen capture your, your thing for the episode here. Okay. Let's see. Oh, this sounds fun. Let's do it. Yeah, I have... It's it's a really cool setup. There we go. It's all good to go. All right, I'm ready for you, John. What do you got here? So let's talk first about the toes, because uh, that's how we started on YouTube. If mm -hmm. you remember, uh, I think uh, this is my best dog. <coughs> it's for shooters. It's a Shiba, and I put this skill on it. I might uh, made a mistake because uh, it's only level eleven. And okay. maybe after I get to level 13, I should have put the skill on it. Yes and no. I mean, I would say, honestly, like the the time that it's going to take to get you a fully legend out, like level 11 skill dog, if you had it all legendary, like at that point, I don't even know. Like, you know, that's going to be as a free to play player. I think that's like two years down the road, if I'm being honest, to get all legendary skills on a dog. So not having that 13 skill dog might be like, ah, like I might be missing two skills. But at the end of the day, I think you're going to be OK with that. And you do. I do see you have quite a few sharpshooter skills on there with some general and passive skills, which is really nice. You only have one cavalry skill on there. Well, that's good. That's really good. And you can kind of breed that out. I'm pretty sure you can lock that legendary skill, though, right now. And do that you could lock that skill for free and when you go do combinations in the future as long as you're um, not combining other legendary skills with legendary skills because i'm not sure about how that works i know if you lock legendary skills and then say put another a level 11 shiba with that skill dog you can potentially get your 13 skill dog and keep your legendary skill though so that dog is not lost and you still can go to 13 you know up to the point where okay. you just don't want to be combining legendaries with legendaries because um, in terms of skills not the dog itself Okay, so uh, it's good. I I might go for level twelve, but uh, but uh, I need. So to... you haven't messed up on that sh that that Shiba, by the way. It's a very good Shiba. I think it's just luck because uh, it's my first legendary dog, and I didn't knew nothing about uh, about missing Shibas with Shibas or uh, pure skills with pure skills. Just uh, I, it's just luck. Yeah, you got extremely lucky not having like a I, 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 like my 11 skill dog has like three melee skills on it, two cavalry skills on it, you know, some sharpshooter skills. And I'm like, I'm pretty upset about that. But I, I've decided that it's just going to be my animal training dog that whenever I need an easy five mil points, I'll combine it with another one that is a mixed breed itself and just get those, you know, get those points. So you are saying that uh, the, this stat multiplier means that uh, you can uh, add more troops in yeah. the formation. Correct. So the stat multiplier is it directly correlates with your front, middle and rear capacity. So if as you have higher stat multipliers, which I haven't seen much over like 6.7 and 6.9, I'm not sure what that's all about. But the stat multiplier is very hard to go up. I wish they would kind of go a little bit more into that or give us a way to kind of level up those multipliers because 
tested. I can't understand because look, this dog level uh, ten, I think. Yeah, level ten has only one skill with uh, this. Yes. Dude. And uh, this uh, dog has uh, three. Yeah, three skills. Yes. And he's five multipl multiplier, and this one is uh, six point seven. I yeah. Well, why. so six point seven. I mean, the the uh, multiplier is going to be. I'm not sure though. This the Sullivan. I'm not sure if you've tried this when you've put those skill multipliers together. Like if you put like a four point nine with a four point nine, or if you put a six point seven with a four point nine, if that's going to reduce the stat multiplier, or if that's how you get better stat multipliers that you put like six point seven with six point seven kind of thing. So that is something. That's a really good question to raise, and I believe that as we go further into the game and you continue to breed these dogs, we might be able to get those stat multipliers up to what? I think the game said you can have a max of like 11 or 13 stat multiplier, which sounds absolutely ridiculous because you can get so many troops if it was that high. But... Uh, I watched some videos about uh, from Survive with Omega. You, I'm sure you know him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, he said that the stat multiplier is like the most important thing on the dog. I don't, I don't know why, but the explana or the explanation, but uh, that's what I understand from his video. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would say it's it's probably like second most important, just in terms of like everything. Legendary skills and the and the proper skills on the dog will be for like the front and foremost, because at the end of the day, having a high stat multiplier is a quality of life RNG thing. Like you just get lucky when you do it. Now we're kind of talking about exchanging these dogs and getting better stat multipliers. Maybe maybe um in the future that will become a lot more important. But as of right now, I think that you work on getting those the correct legendary skills on that dog to an extent where I would say you put on like two or three because you don't want to keep exchanging and using those skill locks and using like those are going to be extremely important, right? Like you need a ton of those. And um, I, I got these legendary skills from uh, boxes, those, those five. Uh... Yes, yeah, that's that's so important. You need to do that every day. I think I have almost 300 of those now built up. I'm really excited about unlocking yeah, those. Kind of the same. I, I had uh, 200 and uh, I don't know what I have right now. Yeah, it's it's best always to open them in like big groups, I found. Yeah, from 100, I get only one or max two skills. Mm -hmm. the best is. So le let's show, let's... Uh, yeah, so look, let's see. You're at Elite 7 and you're on Season 2. And you have season 50 three. million. Oh, season yeah, three? three? Okay. Yeah. Season we are on three. Uh, S1 map because uh, we got overrun on. Oh, yeah. Dude, we got run out on S3 as well. That's the same thing that happened to us. Like, we, uh, yeah, it's the same exact thing that happened to us. And, that's funny. Uh, that's my F1 here, right here. Let's show. This one, I'm running. Um, Hometown Heroes. Hometown Heroes, yes. I also have. Uh, uh, whispers uh, and uh, freedom fighters and love triangle as well, but I'm stuck with the um, with the legendary medals and I can't get them up. Like I'm saving, I'm saving for uh, for those three heroes to get up. Yes, and as a as a like low spender, even like and myself, I, I have started to focus on my F1 as like realizing how the game kind of works and all of that it is really good to start pouring those resources into that F1. And you can slowly start pulling up your F2, 3, and 4 as um, it requires like a hefty amount. Like you'll get to a point where it just requires so much to get your F1 up that looking at like your F2 or 3, if you wanted to farm like higher level walkers or just participate in like higher level rallies to help your team out, you could start leveling those up. But yeah. your main focus is going to be on that F1. And I, 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 did, I do notice since you're going with the hometown heroes, have you decided a troop type? What like what tier of troops are you running right now? I didn't get a chance to look at I'm your barracks. Level eight, level eight right now. Okay, yeah. so, so you're level eight, which what's is your uh, what's your tech? Can you have a look at your tech? Your library. Library, yeah. Uh, stats, uh, development, and uh, I've not even started any melee sharpshoot or cav. Well, that's I think, which is. Uh, I think this one is what you're talking about. That's right, yeah. That's kind of good, actually, that you haven't invested too much resources into that, because you want to specialize into one of those. Yeah, when I reach uh, P9 on level 25, I might invest in it. Yeah, I would even go as far to say as I wouldn't upgrade any more uh, other... I wouldn't focus on any other troop types, because if by keeping those other troop types low in, in future Stronger Survivors, you'll be able to plan out, like, completing all these researches that... 
cost very little for you now because you've gone so far into one through you know where you're where you're doing like 50 day upgrades to get like t10 and such like when I you will still have those. Stronger survivor, I only do like first uh, three or maybe four. Uh, yes, yeah, four you definitely missions. want to do the first three, and then the additional <laughs> fragments are difficult sometimes to get. But that's it's 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 a work in progress. So that's good that you at least got one of the uh, fragments because over time, this game is all a time game. You know, Sullivan and I are here we're in it for the long haul. So it's good that you're here talking with us, and we we want the best for you. But Sullivan, you can add add on to it too. I'd love to hear what you think about some of his cities as well as since you're kind of traveling along a similar path that he is based on your season. Yeah, I am. I just kind of waiting for a, a gap. So I don't want to kind of like talk over you. So I kind of wait for a bit of space beforehand and then I'll kind of chime in. Absolutely. I'm. I, I, it's hard for me to leave gaps because I feel like sometimes like I've been just doing this so long that when I'm like, you know, you, you start streaming to yourself by yourself for so long and you're wondering why people aren't listening or watching and you're like, well, I've got to, I got to say stuff. I got to figure out things. What am I doing? What am I talking about? What do people want to know? Well, and I, I've... Can, I can suggest to the people who are watching, or maybe someone will watch this, uh, to always make uh, on survival challenge when it's a dog thing, like uh, train dogs. You can do that and always get the legendary chest. It's uh, pretty easy. Just train some dogs and uh, if you know what I mean. Exactly. No, I 100% concur with you. The animal training is a free gold chest in my book. Sometimes you get it yeah. two times a day, and it's it's I extremely mean, easy words. Uh, I mean, rewards. It's very nice. And you can get those extra gems from daily tasks as well, like almost 1,000 gems. Exactly. I think it is exactly 1,000 gems per day for the uh, daily. Let's see. Uh, what are you working on right now for your buildings? You got four out of six being built, which is okay. You don't always have to have all your buildings maxed out being created. It is quite smart. I'm, I'm waiting for uh, for the TC to level up. I have wall on me. Nice, yeah. So you're focusing on getting that town hall up. Getting that to 25 is really important because that will double your rewards in Survival Challenge. And um, Really? I didn't know. Yes, yes. So, like, if you go to your survival challenge and, and click on the, or, or scroll down to the rewards on the gold chest. So, you see how that, see, it gives you 2 million uh, bullets. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If, I, if I go to look at my screen right here, which people can see right now, because I have both of ours up, and scroll to my gold chest, let's see, do you get, how many hours? You get four? Wait, when did that happen? That's a bit interesting. Did, do you unlock it at 21? Because it's, it's actually at the same for the grabs. From my understanding, yeah, my one. Um, yeah. what is it that you want to look at? The survival challenge. Survival challenge. And how many hours do you get in bullets for getting a gold chest? When you say hours, like uh, one hour. Uh, yeah, I get, I get one hour for my gold chest. No, actually, hold up. I get three hours for my gold chest, sorry. Three hours? So we both get four hours on our gold chest. So um, I think it scales based on your town hall. So the higher your town hall, the more it scales in terms of rewards. I just could have swore it was on it. Level 25 is when that happened. Maybe it was sooner. There was a pivotal moment where your chests, it cost more to get the gold chest, but it also gave you more rewards from the chest as well. Not sure. Maybe that was a 21 even. I heard a lot of people have problems with bullets. I don't know why. I Look, I have almost 200 millions in stock. And uh, mostly I get from survival challenge. The bullets. Like, do you uh how else do you farm your bullets do you are you uh well now you're in season three so you might not use the bullet camps anymore i stopped kind of assigning survivors uh, to scavenge camps after some time i'm using, I'm using um, scavenge only bullets like a survivor that can do bullets uh, oh you basically it. assigned them all just to one resource that's pretty much what you did can i look at your uh survivors and your development uh yeah for sure but before that, can we take a snapshot? Can you hit your um, bullets at the top and see what your production is per hour? So that's like, what, two, uh, 277, is that right? Yeah. 278. Yeah, yeah. So now Almost. let's look at your, hmm. now let's look at your development survivors. Uh, development tab. Oh, okay. Okay, do you have gear on all of your um, bullet production survivors? Mm. I'm just curious. 
Oh, no, no, no. Only on Eugene and Eugene. my gear. Just for and demonstration gear. purposes, can you remove gear for um, desire? Because you've got development going at the moment, haven't you? You've got research undergoing, so that's that no longer is actually relevant while research is happening. Oh. So, so bottom okay. left hand, bottom left hand, just hit remove, and it'll remove all of them. Okay. okay. And then go to um, a bullet production survivor. So maybe is it? Um, It'd be a green one. It would either be. It Zoe, could be Joe. Remember. It could be Zoe. Yeah, so keep going down. There's Zoe. So if you can put the equipment back on Zoe that you took from Isaiah, and just bottom right hand corner. No, go. No, get. Don't do it this okay. way. This is the slow okay. way. Yeah. Bottom right hand corner. It'll Boom. Equip it straight away. Boom. Now look at your production. Go back out and look at your production. It's going to increase. It's gone from 270. It's gone up to what? 280. Like. Uh, Three three thousand like that. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm suggesting is people do that once they finish their builds and stuff because it actually boosts your production. So this is so okay. the difference here is okay. when you do training troops, when you do library research, when you do building, it takes snapshot. It it basically calculates prior to upgrade. Whereas when it comes to gathering, you can actually it's a dynamic. So the moment you unequip and equip development uh, equipment on um, resource survivors it actually increases your production straight away there's a, an immediate effect so i can use those uh, legendary gear and put it on isaiah and uh, so you only you do you understand how the region chief buffs work yes yes it's the same thing about it's the same yeah. thing yeah so it's always like prior prior to the upgrade you you once you have it like once you've used the benefits from increasing that speed you will now receive okay. that. You can unequip that um, equipment. I actually, could you click one of your epic pieces of gear? Because we can actually go through and explain each um, individual skill and why that works that way. I click so that. You want to do? Yep, perfect. Okay. So as we're scrolling through here, um, you have your veggie production, your water production, your lumber production, all the way to bullets. And that that's where you get that bullet production from. So when you assign it to that, bullet, that uh, gun shop, you're going to get that 2.1K plus bullets to everybody that is assigned that has the additional, you know, that, that piece of gear on them. And you can swap that gear in and out. It's very similar to your training speed, your research time, and your construction time. You only need that gear on that uh, specific survivor when you start the initial upgrade for that building that you get the benefits from it. And if you were really min-maxing, you could remove that gear and then say you wanted to train some units, you could put it on your um, your trainers. And then once you've trained them, you can go to your research. Next time Isaiah, as Isaiah's doing an upgrade, you know, when you finish that research, you yeah, put the research on to him. See, to see the difference on Isaiah. Let's uh, speed up this one. And I know, Sullivan, you had some more to add on there. Go ahead, please. I'm going to see if I can go on my other account and see whether or not I can just demonstrate it to you because it might be easier if I demonstrate it. Absolutely. I, I would love to get you even in here with like, you could have your, um, I could have you with your video cam. I don't know if you have a cam yet or if you've uh, worked that into your OBS, but it'd be pretty cool. We could even just do your picture on Discord as well as you're talking and going through these because we could have a pretty cool setup with how it is. I'll show you, I'll, I'll upload this one. It'll be kind of like a theory craft talk, but both the phones are side by side. And I think we can do some pretty interesting things with it. I've got another setup because I've got two accounts. I can actually run um, my second account from my phone and upload that via Discord while I have my food stack. So I can actually side by side myself. Very nice. And if I have an iPad, I could do a three by three. That's pretty cool. I, I actually, I'll screenshot this for you right now. I'll show you what I what it what it looks like when I'm running right now. So before you commence your upgrade, remove your equipment on Isaiah. Remove this? For now, yeah, just for demonstration purposes. Okay, okay, okay. And I have uh, like uh, on this upgrade. So don't don't actually click upgrade, just get the resources yeah. if necessary. So you can see right now you've got two days, two hours, 44. Yeah, now and with go uh, back, Yeah, now yeah. go back out, uh, put the equipment back on Isaiah. Probably won't go down by much because it only reduces it by one hour. Yeah, one hour I saw it already. Let's try. Yeah, almost one hour. Yeah. So the only other thing you really want to do is get the region chief buff if you can get the um, the scientist buff. 
yeah. that would go down by a, a huge amount. Like about a, another ten percent. Yeah, I know. Uh, I don't use the region chief buff only when I upgrade my PC or some big buildings. Oh, like. No. But dude, you, you 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 need to understand that it's worth doing it for your scientists and all of these because that's ten percent of your build time. Time is everything in this game. Yeah, it's true, but it takes a lot of time, even even with dogs. If yeah, I, uh, I understand the need. It depends on how active your RC is. Like, uh, we have a pretty active buffer, so when we request buffs, it, you know, it's you, sometimes you wait a couple of minutes, but it's not very long to set it up. And that ten percent can go a long ways. And and sometimes you might not be as encouraged to do it on things that only are like twenty four hours or some of your lower buildings. But um, like Sullivan said, that time does add up, and and um, it just kind of depends on your play style. So. We have a group and uh, we type there and ask for buffs and pick gave us like uh, I just uh, asked for uh, artifact and uh, I got one now I can upgrade my uh, I don't know what to what to I like your city setup there it's pretty cool thank you I I copied someone I don't <laughs> know who but. I I also uh, can uh, suggest you to make settlement settlement siege uh, video. I only got to level forty five. Day forty five. Let's open up and see what you got. Let's yeah, let's do it. We we can help you beat it right now. Oh, okay. Okay, I would take out Maya and I'll take out Andrea. They are very good. They are sniper skill. Uh, okay, I I will do what you say. Let's have a look at the other providers who are higher. Those. I've come up with like an insane setup actually. I I have it's, mine on display, yeah. but you definitely want Zeke. Like if you go onto Zeke, which yeah, you, you want Zeke. Have, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Open up Zeke and Corey is definitely who you want. Click on that green commander, the radius. That particular skill is too valuable to not yeah. have. Yeah, so you I actually want Abraham. You want Rosita. You want Maggie. Correct. Yep. If you if you oh no. I thought uh, those have a display as well, but no, they don't. No, they don't. And the reason why that's up, because what you can do, you can unequip your gear and put all your purple gear on this, and that'll improve them their power straight away. Okay, I know what to do. Yeah. So, uh, I want Zeke. What, what else do I want? Uh, you want Rosita. Abraham? Abraham. They are not uh, that much level up. I think. That's okay. So, I've noticed that like the survivor power is important but like a rosita three star she's one of my highest dps characters in there she will she knocks she, everything out yeah she's a she's a beast honestly. only if he's level 30 can do that or mm -hmm. have, have some faith in the two get rid of billy billy's useless yeah uh i also I enjoy um i want to say is that amy amy's a healer it's an aoe heal it's really nice i run two melee and i run six ranged I'll, r I'll drop the melee when they start getting close to my towers to kind of soak up and, and absorb damage as they're getting closer to those towers. And it turns out to work out really well because Amy has a passive heal as she's throwing those packs at them. And she also has an yeah. overtime heal that you can drop on top of them. And on top of that, you have Maggie, who also does a nice heal um, called Field Dressing, which increase which um, heals your survivors for 30% over 10 seconds. So I think you you just got to get to your Morgan. I run a Morgan and Samantha, actually, for my two tanks. Do you have a, do you have a Negan at all? No, no, I don't. Uh, he would be really good. But yeah, Morgan's good. Yeah, I run Morgan. I My personal setup is um, Samantha, Abraham, Zeke, Rick, Morgan, Rosita, uh, Maggie, Amy. Uh, sh what should I... Uh... So Maybe for level up Abraham and Rosita, then uh, try or uh, well, we'll see how far you get here. You can replace, so, yeah, you can replace all your equipment if you want. That will make okay. it easier. Okay. So this one. Do you have um Amy? Can you replace yeah. the um? You yes. definitely want one healer, yeah, for sure. Maybe Gabriel. I would replace uh, Gabriel. Yeah, Gabriel or the other uh survivor there. What's that name of that survivor? I don't even use him because I don't I don't know the name of it. Let's see. Oh, which survivor? Corey. Corey. Yeah. Must be Corey, yeah. I would replace Corey with Samantha. Is your Samantha up there? Just try the two tanks here. She's gonna be you just passed her. She's she's farther back there. I just posted you my uh, settlement siege. 
There we go. It's it's not bad. All right. That looks pretty so solid to me. Let's replace the here. Let's put on uh, maybe Abraham, Rosita. We can. I would say a hundred percent Rosita, but we can try it like this, as is, Rosita. and see what how you far how far it goes. Okay. I normally always stick it on times four because I don't have the patience for it. Okay, let's do times two. Let's try that. And then I would put Maggie on your put Maggie on the let the west tower, that farthest west one. Yep. And then put your Rick on the far east tower because you can see those lines coming in. And then start getting your Abraham as the next one out there as soon as possible next to your Maggie. Oh, she got destroyed. Yeah, yep, that's okay. Good. Just keep it going there. And get your Rosito out next. Where are they coming from? Kind of look around. All right, so you got some from the east side, some from the west. All right. Put a healer? Go ahead, throw your Amy down, yeah. And put your Zeke next to her. And then the Rick, that Rick speed buff is going to be really nice. Go ahead and put that on all your survivors. Should be able to hit most of them with that, if not all of them. There we go. And then, yep, get your last survivor out there for a tank. Figure out where they're coming from. There we go. You got a couple zombies coming in here. You could probably times forward at this point if you'd like to. And I then you clear this one duty bound it again. Like that duty bound, just keep it rolling. Always have it going. There we go. Easy. GG. Yeah, very easy. Nice. And then, Sullivan, what do you have additionally on your settlement siege? You said you're running a Negan on yours? I could see that being pretty good. I've never used Negan personally. It I probably would replace. Because I only recently got him. I'm just looking at his uh, skill stat because he's got extra HP and he does the AoE damage. Like, I don't run Samantha over Morgan because Morgan's actually got an AoE punch. I think he's got Buckshot, whereas Samantha's just plain tanky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's got 56k so health for me. So. Yeah, you see that skill? That's the yeah. Samantha skill. There's just one. There's just steel wield. But if you look at Morgan. Yeah, the, there is one. Oh, yeah, he's got the Buckshot, can the hit multiple targets in one time. Yeah, which is. It's more effective, basically. Uh, I I know that. Um, how is it called? Let me see. Uh, Michonne. Michonne has um, also. Yeah. Yeah, Negan has three actually. Yeah, he's got uh, buckshot and bullhorn. During normal attacks, there's a possibility of additional trigger trigger additional effects. He's also very Good tanky. Tank. Yeah. Very tanky. So he would replace yeah. Samantha for sure. Like the other thing is, is you know when you release your survivors and put them out, I have a strategy in terms of mid-maxing in that sense. You want to release all of your survivors which don't have skills first, because what ends up happening is it, uh, every time you release a skill or release a survivor with a skill, then that, that skill takes up your queue. It yeah. blocks your survivor from coming out because it, it takes up a queue. Yeah. Should I try the next one or put the gear? What do you think? Go for it. Go for it. Let's see. Go ahead, Sylvan. You got this. All right. <laughs> so yeah, probably put out Zeke. I put I put him. I would I would put him south to be honest. Yeah, I I only have level eighteen uh, on uh, towers that might. Uh, now put out Sadiq. The, the, oh, the fighter. Yep. And then I guess you put uh, Abraham or Rosita for sure. Ah, I saw him. It's all right. Yeah, I noticed on blue stacks as well. If you do the, if you run this event on blue stacks, it's a bit easier than when you do it on mobile. Ooh, I was lagging a little bit there. Now you can only put one more hero down. Yeah, that's fine. It looks good. And you have your sound set up, your uh, town set up pretty much perfect. You know, you got a lot of uh, good buffers in between your towers and them. I do, I do think I saw one of your towers level four or so. Those do kind of hurt I'll, you, but I'll still nitpick. <laughs> I'm a nitpicker, man. <laughs> nice. Hey, you cleared it. Yeah. And I don't don't even have the equip equipment on them. Let's try again. I think this next one looks like it might be a bit a bit tricky. But yeah, you just want to put your heroes out which don't have skills first, because then it allows you to get the other ones out quicker. Oh, 
I'd always prioritize obviously Zeke over like Mele and Tigan. Yeah, I would put Zeke there. Yeah, and as you and if you do hit bottlenecks, the the higher level towers you get, the more tact they'll have on those towers. Yeah. Look at Zeke just absolutely bossing it. What was that comment that you said? Because I think I was lagging when you when you mentioned something about blue stacks, Bogan. I was saying I think that settlement siege is actually a lot easier on uh, blue stacks. Um, there's something to do with the units that spawn, and um, it makes it rather easy. It almost feels like a glitch, to be honest, because on the mobile, I feel more units spawn, and when you go to complete this, you'll notice in the top left that it actually doesn't go down to zero. Um, and and it says you kill more than you do. It's kind of weird. I just it just happened on my settlement siege. I, I'm streaming my side, and I did level fifty, and like it has fifteen units, and I complete it, and it says all of them are dead. <laughs> That's kind of interesting, little tip there with blue sacks. I feel the same way. I feel that uh, playing on blue sacks is much easier than playing on mobile for whatever reason. They just bug out. Yeah, it, sometimes they get stuck at the gate. Four, <laughs> they bug out like always. I know yeah. you shouldn't. It's just crazy. On the gates, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and then when the time elapses, you still three star it because it's only about surviving. It has nothing to do with any killing them all. Yeah. I search a lot uh, about settlement siege on, siege on YouTube, and I can find. I I actually put out a video that's surprising you haven't seen it. I I put out a couple. I think I have one or two videos. Actually, no, my second one. Um, all the audio was corrupted for it, so I never got to upload that one. So sad. But it looks like you're handling it quite well now. Yeah, I I'm very impressed. I just I a couple survivor design. changes, you know, and uh, yes. that's all it is. Just a few tweaks. This new clan that I joined today, AVG, they have max style auxiliary and battles. It's really nice. Very nice. I think there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine skills left to max out in clan. Something we can talk about is um, in guilds. Like uh, I saw a lot of people that have, uh, let's say, uh, two millions here, and they beat me with uh, four point eight millions. And do, when I look at the report, they have only one formation and spawn. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's it's kind of bait, you know. You attack <laughs> them, and, uh, <laughs> they get your point. <laughs> then uh, I look here on uh, how much points do they have, and it's this this very big number. I just don't attack them. Yeah, you have so to be careful with those. You can attack them just just for research purposes. Then you can actually figure out whether or not you can beat them. Yeah, if if you know uh, your um, F1 has like 2 million power and their F1 have 2 million power, you can try. But if your F1 has 1.6 million, like mine, it's never a good <laughs> good idea. It, I don't know. I don't I completely <laughs> agree. It, there are little ways to actually improve your chances of beating higher level players. There's there's so much detail there that like I I I, I cannot wait to kind of express. Like if you go onto your jewels and then if you look at uh, the 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 formation, right? If you see when you challenge someone, you know the number that that appears in front of you. That is based on defensive formation. It it does not actually show you the offensive formation. Offensive formation for whatever reason is hidden. It's only defensive formation. That's the only power that you actually see. Hey, well, uh, the defensive and the offensive are the same formation, you know. So if you let me show you then. You are talking um, about the buffs, like they have like um, attack buff and uh, they don't have defense buff. Let's have a look. How have you set up your formation? 
this is the way I would set up your automation. I would put your F1 in four, I'd put your F2 in one, and then I'll put your F3 in two. I'll switch it around. Okay. I don't understand right. It's not the same okay. thing. He's going he's to tell you right now. About to learn today. Yeah, the, the reason why you do it that way is because it's all turn-based combat. What you want to do is if you hit your F2 against their F1, you weaken their F1 as time with each round that goes. With oh, every okay. round, and the longer you last in each round, the more that you're able to whittle down their F1, which means that you win in the end. Okay, I understand now. Yeah, I will, uh, I will make this change. So I if you edit now, I can show you if you want to. Okay. On uh, offense first, right? No, just do your defense. Actually, you can do offense first, yeah, if you want. Okay. So just hit edit, and then you see the formation on the... No, no, just go back out again. Top right, it says edit, and you can move up and down. So you want square one to be in position four. Then you want square two to be in position one. And then you want square four to be in position two. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, this is perfect. This is fine as it is. Okay. So now just load up your um, formation and now try and do you have any dual tickets to try it out? Yes, I have five tickets. So maybe try. <laughs> it makes me want to get my spreadsheet out, bro. <laughs> I'm actually following along on my side here as well. Should I change the defense as well, right? It's uh, it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, so what do you think about that, Solvin? Do you set up your defense and offense the same, as in you have your F1 in the far back, F2 in the front, as like to beat down your initial F1 so you can kind of combat that, and then your your F1 kind of takes it all the way to the next level, right? It'll start, it'll win out on the, hopefully their F1, their F2, 3, and 4. Yeah, by the time it hits your F1, um, it won't be there. They won't. Their F1 won't be at 100. percent That that's the theory. Mm -hmm. As long as you're able to kind of knock them down slightly, you have a better chance of winning. Exactly. I don't understand why uh, the power uh, got uh, low, lower. Maybe, yeah, it's not full. Uh, maybe my team. Yeah. So it. so what happens is is when you instant kill your formations, which is a little bit annoying, is that it will do it in order from top to bottom. So every time you instant kill, it goes from top to bottom, which yeah. is annoying. It doesn't go, it doesn't prioritize your F1 first. It prioritizes the order in which you've set your formation squares up. That should be okay. Which I think is yeah. really irritating, but it, it is what it is. So let's uh, try to kill someone with bigger power. Maybe. Maybe not too much bigger than you are, but something which you feel like you would... So actually make no. a choice based on how you would make a choice, and then this we can guy, go through the I will, report. I will never be able to kill this guy. It's like almost 7,000 uh, plus points, and uh, he has lower power than me. I don't understand how he, how he did that. Maybe his F1 is... Uh, maybe only his F1 is 4.5 million, maybe. Another element is the recruit system and also dogs as well. Dogs and the recruit system that's just come out is going to have an effect on jewels as well. Yeah. Um, okay. So I think I'm, by the way, I'm going to reset my RV and uh, get that war chariot or the uh, vintage truck. Have you guys, did you guys receive the vintage truck? Is that something across all seasons now? Apparently it's only six season six. I think Patel yeah. mentioned only season six onwards. Season six onwards. Okay. Nice. It gives you heal speed on the body, which is really cool. Max of fifty two percent. I'm gonna go ahead and right. I'm gonna make that a video. Let's go. Let's do it. But yeah, no no choose a choose oh, another thing that you can do actually is can you um do you have buffs on right now? Uh Yes, I do. Okay, can you... Oh, you're on a shield. You want to keep that shield, don't you? If you no, don't... I'm on uh, this one. Season 1, Legion. Okay, so I, I would recommend that you scout someone. They are all shielded up, like... Oh, okay. Just find, like, a dead account. Like, go to the outskirts. You can... Z no, like... I think it's because it's maintenance, isn't it, bro? Oh, so yeah, like you a... can't scout anybody. <laughs> oh, that's so annoying. <laughs> 
So basically what happens is you can actually, like when you click instant on edit your formation, you can it will take a snapshot of what your current formation is in all your buffs. So every time you update your formation, it will save a snapshot of your current buff or jewels. So you can do that even when you're defending. So you can actually take a snapshot of your defensive and keep buffs on your characters like 24 seven. So if you had region chief buffs and things like that, you can snapshot that and save it. I know that this is kind of like a lot of information to take in. Like no, I know, no, I, I understand, but uh, I didn't know those things. And you know this guy, Kirby, it's on your region as well. Like mm -hmm. Kirby. He's not on my region. Yeah. Kirby. What's your what's the biggest power? Why why I saw people with uh, two thousand two two zero 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 like not seventeen. Our world and champ is uh twenty two point six million and he's at fifteen point six thousand dual points. So another three uh four thousand um yeah. dual points and he's got an additional four or five million power on maybe, all formations. Maybe because of um of the square five or why it's going to be square what? five definitely but if i were to click him i can ins inspect him actually you can go to your leaderboard so if you if you back out of that and then click your profile in the top left and then go to ranking and then scroll down to combat survivors oh, i'm sorry it's going to be up there just a little bit one more up right there and this will show you um their teams you can click Kirby and you can see all of his survivors. And you can scroll through and you can see his gear and where he gets um, all that power from. Our, our uh, top guy has a, yeah, he's got a seven star Ezekiel with full legendaries at 3.9 million. So that's another 900,000 power on his formation that he has. More than that guy, he also has a two or a seven star governor, which is 2.4 mil compared to the five star governor, which he has. But you guys are in season three yet, so you haven't unlocked seven stars yet. He's got Teenager Carl. Teenager Carl. That's funny. I saw that Ezekiel, uh, like seven stars, is like two thousand, uh, no, twenty thousand uh, bucks, I guess. Yeah. Come on, I feel like we're digressing. Let's get back to the jewels. <laughs> Let's get back to the jewels. <laughs> Let's get back on. <laughs> okay. Stop getting distracted. I want to. I want to go through battle reports. So why should I attack? Maybe I think guy? you should attack what you normally do, then we can kind of go through why okay. that decision was a good or bad one. I don't want to have an influence here because I don't know how you make decisions. Maybe this guy? Sometimes you have to keep no, hitting no, switch maybe. opponents. <laughs> keep, just, go ahead, yeah, do it. Yeah, you're right, you're right. One. Go for it. Nice. Now let's look at that battle report. Yeah. So if you look at battle reports just for face value, for every win, that's one less formation that you have to deal with. Well, so I didn't understand. Can you repeat? So right now you have four formations versus four formations, right? Yes. So if you look at round one, that was your F2. So that means now that he's done one win, it means that your F2, now you're three formations versus four formations. Round two, it's now two formations versus four formations. Now, you're, now you, you win round three and four, so now it's two formations against each other. Do you understand? It's, it's one turn at a time. It's turn-based. Uh, yeah, I kind of understand, but not 100%. <laughs> maybe, yeah, it's hard to explain. Well, let's go through and look at them individually. You can scroll to the right. Yep, just a little click drag. And so that so the whole reason that we put that that you put those formations like that was to just whittle that front army down. And you did take massive losses on it, but you did wound it. So as that continues to the next round, it's going to have to deal with your F1 formation at full power um versus yeah. the uh, you know, the lather. Yeah, if you scroll to the very top, you actually see how much damage that he's taken. Yeah. So yeah, you've only reduced it by 150,000. It's not a lot, but 
with every round that goes down. So if you scroll right again, you took off another 214. And I you can keep going. Why uh, look? This one has uh, 1.6 million, and look, less than this one has. Uh, so if you go back to the first report. Okay. And you only look at the right side. He's at 1.8 million. Below it, it says 149,000. So 1.8 million minus 149,000. Next page, round two. Now it's at 158 million, or 1.5 million. Yes. You took off another 200,000. So now it should be down to one point. Keep going. Okay. Right, one point three. Now it's at 721,000. That is F1 getting getting knocked down round after round and getting weaker round after round. Damn. This is so good. It's just so good for your duels. You it's going to help you out so much. Yeah, yeah. yes, it will, he will help me. And uh, you can post it and a lot, or maybe don't post it. <laughs> Let's keep it for yourself. <laughs> 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 well, it's about. It's going to be about 46 minutes into the uh, recording, so they're going to have to watch all of it to get it, which means they really wanted it so they could have it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, but this is, this is the idea of switching out your formations and understanding that the way duels work and the way fights work in TWS is turn-based. Everyone takes a turn at a time. So what you would have not would have lost normally, you won because you were able to uh, to use this strategy by changing yeah. the formation. His F one uh, was bigger was bigger than mine, and for sure I will lose that battle if I didn't do that. But the same thing is, is you want to adopt that for your defensive formation as well. I I did it. Twelve, fifteen, three, four, five. But if you look at your power, your defensive, it's uh, four, eight, one, one, eight, zero. If you remove your, if you remove one one formation from your offense, it won't go down. Okay. So let's just say edit quickly, and then just click save. Just click save for for argument. Just click save now and have a look at your power. So go back, just hit save, so there's no, I oh, just put one troop in, just put a single troop somewhere. And now look at your power, it's not gone down. Can you see? Yes, it's uh, like the defense power. Yeah, it only shows you their defensive power. It never shows you your offense. So, so, so when you challenge someone, all you see is their defense. You never see their, their offensive power. I understand. Also, if it shows you the defensive power, uh, is like those buffs are uh, are included? Like yeah. So go back defense. to yeah. Go back to the battle report, and then we can go into battle attributes or a battle attributes. So go to round one, maybe. Scroll right. Yeah. Oh, you can click it. I didn't know that. That's cool. So go to attribute source, and if you look here, you look at buffs, that's, yeah, that's 20%. Yes. But if you get reckless, that's another 2%. So you have 22% buff maximum. Sorry about that, guys. Um, I had the, I just realized the video wasn't showing on that. So what do you suggest me to go uh, down, uh, down uh, level 25 and then uh, upgrade uh, like bullets or... Uh, like that also go on with squares square one square one i don't know broben what's your thoughts i mean my idea is just to level your, your town hall 25 as soon as possible i guess yeah if you're playing like lightweight min max i would say you only get the required buildings to get to 25 because as we've been talking about strong survivor survivor and getting as many gold chests as on your survival challenges by not um upgrading the other buildings unnecessarily you're saving essentially points for the future that will come into handy because these are finite you won't be able to upgrade these buildings ever again once it's 25 it's 25 so when you are scheduling and planning your buildings you have to take that into account that you will never be able to use that again as a way to get that gold chest per se also if you see i have minus on uh, the production of veggies and uh water is because of uh, troop consumption consumption but uh, 
if if they run out like i can't enter like uh, for two or three days but the troops will die or what happens what will happen if you run out of uh food and water yes yes nothing happens um you just start out of food and water it's and i it's how i operate as well i run off negative food and negative uh water i've been doing it since i think season two uh, season one, it was a bit difficult, but you start to accumulate so many resources in your bank where you can almost always fulfill the requirements for those buildings. And if you ever lack anything and you don't like being in the negative, you can also assign survivors to various uh, resource camps. I, I, I did see that you have many of them in your bullet camps, which is wise, though, because you're going to need quite a bit of bullets to uh, unlock your tier 10 research, etc. I think that Town Hall 25, Barracks 25, and T10 Research 25 is going to be upwards of a billion bullets. Yeah, I saw very big numbers. Uh, so the troops are not dying if you all go on zero. It's good to know. I always uh, keep using from the storage or uh, attacking uh, Woodley with uh, zombies on the map, things like that. I never run on, on zero trigger. Yeah, so that's a nice stressor that off your chest then, for sure, if you were thinking that. It's it's kind of interesting to hear some of these hear some of the thoughts from players that are you know still learning the game and not understanding the full concepts of these because I think it brings um, a lot of awareness to how we can teach and guide players as we go through this because you know Sullivan here he's also creating content as well he's a very knowledgeable player runs his own clan and um, it's it's just really good for all of us I think we're, we've we've learned just you know so much even here. We've been recording for about 51 minutes. It's it's, it's quite yes. great. And the time uh, went so fast. Yeah, it did, didn't it? That's <laughs> the fastest hour of your life, huh? <laughs> when, you, when you do things that you like, uh, the time is the time passes very fast. Yeah, it's quite awesome. Okay, so guys. I, see, see. I was going to say, like, I do have a theory on dogs a little bit. Okay. So I was kind of talking to, like, uh, Hayden and um, Peruvian. And I think Peruvian's got a bit more understanding when it comes to dogs. I think when it comes to dogs, I was under the impression that um, each dog has a representative troop type, but that does not appear to be the truth as far as I'm concerned. Well, it actually, it actually is, though. I can show you where it says that. Oh, is it? Yes. Because I thought Rockweiler is melee, Shiva is shooter, and Husky is cab, right? Yes, Husky which is fire. correct, because they, they generate innate abilities that um, are for that, geared towards that. But there's also a small little text. Um, let me see if I can't find it on my side here before I go, so you can continue. Yeah, so basically, when you exchange two dogs, like if you just click two random dogs to exchange, choose the low ones, but don't actually exchange it. So let's say two level three skill, yeah, two level threes. So if you look at preview, so basically how this works is like, you know it says skills preview six at most? That's yeah. because each level three dog has the ability to hold three skills. The reason why it's not six out of six is because there's overlapping skills. So, to mid max the opportunity to gain like better skills obviously it's going to go from a three skill dog to a four skill potentially but it's a six at most so it the, the rng is probably very low to get a six skill dog from these two dogs very low however if you are able to combine two dogs which have six like individual yeah, one, separate one, yeah. skills it means that you have a chance to gain those skills or keep those skills it, it it gives you a better exchange. So let's if I uh, exchange a uh, husky with a husky. Yeah. I can still get the uh, eleven uh, skill dog, but if I exchange a uh, Shiba with a husky, I can get the twelve. It depends if they have overlapping skills. If they do not have overlapping skills, that means it'll be twenty. It'll be a twenty-two skilled dog, but it that doesn't exist. Yes. Yes. So it seems they've changed the wording. I can't quite find it, but you used to be able to go to your, like when you go to your um, skills there, if you click like one of your empty slots, can you scroll down and click one of your empty slots? There we go. No, that's fine. That was That's actually where we need to be. That's fine. Many ways to get there. If you click the Husky now on that page, just click the picture of it. Now, it, right where it says Huskies are energetic and agile, 
he used to say um along lines additional uh like damage buff for uh cavalry and i can't find that language anymore in here it seems they might have changed that and i'm not sure if they're if the devs would have you know they're describing rottweilers are smart and strong so you know they're strong so they're melee and huskies are um energetic and agile so agile you know cavalry it is better with the edge with that um but that would be something completely out of the um out of the blue i would say at this point but i just can't, i can't find it anymore you used to be able honestly, to see I, it i honestly feel like um i had the same thought honestly but it was there I, dude it was there i'm telling you it existed i read it and i actually, no, i have conversations with somebody talking about it animal story again and it, this is already there it's quite subtle animal shop and now click on the husky and look at the possible initial skills all it shows you is cavalry if you go into the other ones it will only show you melee and they don't only show you no you can't oh remember. okay <laughs> yeah this one has but that's weird yeah in uh, rottweiler they have different ones yeah but if you look at the top it's kind of slightly different like if you look at the top three it for rottweiler it will be melee Top three for Husky is Cav, and then top three for Shiva is Shooter. So it kind of holds true if you look at it that way. Yeah, I would just say as like a general rule of thumb that you were you. I would categorize animals in two categories. You have a purebred, and you have a mix. And that Husky can have a mix of skills. It has the potential to have a sharp shooter skill, just like the Rottweiler has a chance to have a cavalry skill. And I would call that a mixed dog because you will have to eventually breed that out of it, in which you can. But I, I prefer to just do mixed with mixed and peer with peer. And my peers are going to be the ones that I'm investing in. And the mixed ones are I'm using to um, get gold chests with animal training, if that makes sense. I, I completely agree. Like I have me, one like... more question and uh, I will let you, I will go. Like, yeah, no, okay. Fine, we can go for it. So um, what should I spend the gems on? Like uh, I spend on elite. I uh, kind of, the, the, the only thing that I spend is on elite. Yeah, I think that's pretty much. You want to hit elite ten as soon as possible. Agreed. There are, uh, why? there are things that once you hit elite ten, if you look at the bottom, you have one more building cube, so that's one more builder, and then you have one more jewel ticket, and then if you look at your daily rewards, you actually start getting gold uh, fragments. So important. Daily. Yeah, the sooner you get that, the the sooner you'll start getting that your governor up, and um, the governor's an extremely strong survivor. I, I only use legendary survivor fragments on governors. Uh, in the past, I had used it on other um, survivors, but I had instantly regret that as I pulled many more of that <laughs> survivor. So you want to use your hats on things that you can't obtain from the long range, um, yeah. your broadcast station. I saw on Excel, like, uh, it told you how many gems uh, are required to get a certain level of elite. And uh, I can't remember, but it's a lot. Like uh, elite ten, it's I don't know, maybe two hundred thousand. Yeah. Or there uh, is a sheet. There's one on the TWF Discord that you can look in featured guides. Yeah, I saw one. I don't remember where, but like, look, I have uh, ten thousand here, and uh, maybe. 20,000 in the shop, in the inventory, yeah. So this is my advice for spending rubies. Like, I would always, always wait for, I think, Broven, I think you call it something different, but I call it Clan Legends. I think you call it Team Event. Uh, it's called Clan Legends. Oh, okay, okay. I, I I, think I've, said, I've oh. heard in your video you say Team Event. No, like Peruvian said <laughs> Team Event. <laughs> I, I, I can tell you've been talking to Peruvian. Yeah, last night she was calling it Team Event. I was like, it's Team Legends. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and uh, we'll use that uh, there. Where, uh... So, yeah, let me finish my, my point is um, you want, because every time it's uh, the cycle of Clan Legends, Clan Legends always overlaps with Ruby Rush. And that always overlaps with the gift pack. So if you have the, if you collect the quest with the gift pack, I think the maximum is like 20,000 Ruby quest, or you get the 10,000 Ruby quest, or the 5,000, 3,000, 1,000. You want to collect that quest, spend the Ruby, and do it during Ruby Rush. Because not only will you boost your elite level, you boost your chance of getting the next uh, development item for your uh, uh, development survivors through Ruby Rush, but you'll also put clan points towards your um, your clan. 
as well as getting that type of Andrea. It, it's almost like a triple whammy. Yeah, I understand. Uh, and Robin, you said uh, something about the uh, Wheel of Prosperity on screen, but I couldn't understand very well. You mean... Uh, yeah, I was just um, uh, consoling the dead server part of what you were speaking of. You know, as some of your servers become inactive, they will become more active as you get merged into new regions and such. But as, like, if it is a, truly a dead server, make sure you pay attention to the leaderboards on Wheel of Prosperity, because you can probably snag a hundred legendary fragments very cheap like the, the the and this is the only time you'll ever be able to do it again is in those seasons when there's not a lot of competition and it's it's quite easy uh, to get that rank I, one uh, position i won this thing on uh, legendary wheel on mm -hmm. prosperity but i i don't know how i only press one and the roll the wheel and got this one after the event uh, finished that's interesting you must uh, see if you only pressed one that means your server is um like you said, dead, and you have the ability to get uh, rank one from that, which will give you greater, uh, you know, town hall unique skins, and like, it's just all good. Like, Wheel of Prosperity is is probably one of the best okay. events for getting those. So uh, you you don't mean to win the ruby jackpot? You mean to get rank one? Yeah, if you get the uh, ruby jackpot, good for you. But that's not what you're doing it for. You're doing it for the leaderboards, the the rank three words on that. Just check check it up, you know, the last day before the event ends. See what it is. If it's at like, you know, three, four hundred, you could spend ten, twenty dollars if you wanted to, and you could take those hundred legendary fragments, which I'm telling you is at like a value at like well over a, a two hundred dollars if you were to get a hundred of those fragments. Yeah, yes. Okay, thank you very much. But for yeah, the we can end the view. Let's say we can end the video here, and you know, this is recorded. I'm gonna upload it raw i just want to see how it does i want to see how people if people watch it and uh how that kind of works but we can end this here thank you so much for um talking with us john and sullivan you guys have any uh parting segments uh, i'm gonna say my piece and bye here and i will end the recording after you guys are finished so i'll just say yeah thank you very much for this it's, uh, it's been a good laugh it's been good fun um but yeah check out robin's uh, youtube channel as well and also make sure you join the pwf discord Okay. Peace. Bye bye. Absolutely. Thank you guys. All right. Peace.